Chapter 4. Chemical Foundations. Elements, atoms, and ions. So the elements. We talked about um, pure substances, and ele which are, you know, can be divided into elements and compounds. Now we're going to talk a little more about the elements. Um, when this book was written, there were 116 known elements. Now I think we're up to 118. Um, 88 of these are found in nature. The others are man-made. There are people who spend their days trying to make new elements. Um, learning the names and symbols of the elements is a lot like learning the alphabet. You have a five-year-old in preschool, and he brings home his homework, and every week they study a different letter, and he's learning his letters. You can't read if you don't know the letters. You can't do chemistry unless you know the elements. So you need to learn those. Hopefully you already have learned about, I think it was 35 of them on that list of things to memorize. Yes? Isn't it 92? That's a good question. Because it, it, the black ones go up to 92. Um, but PM, I can't remember what that one is. Technetium, Prometheum. Prometheum, thank you. Those, those are also man-made. And I don't know what the other two would be. Two man-made? Apparently there are two others that are man-made, not found in nature. And I'm not going to test you on that number. And I'm not actually claiming that that number is necessarily exactly right. Because they keep, you know, most of the things in general chemistry pretty much stay the same. But then there's these little pieces that, that change. Does it really matter how many elements there are? Not really. Especially these, these man-made ones. They can make them, um, but then they're very unstable, and so they just fall apart very quickly. So that's why they're not found in, in nature. Um, just kind of for general interest, this table shows us uh, distribution by mass percent of the 18 most abundant elements in the Earth, including the crust, the oceans, and the atmosphere. That does not include the core of the Earth, because I don't know that anybody knows the exact composition of that. We see that oxygen is the most prevalent element in, in the world, literally. And it, when you think of the fact that sand is silicon and oxygen, that starts to make sense. And water contains oxygen, and there's an awful lot of water on the earth, right? So a lot of, a lot of oxygen, and then the rest of these end up being quite small percentages. And so we list those 18 most abundant ones, and then all the rest of them are half a percent. So most of the elements, there's not a whole lot of it present, but they're there. So when we use the word element, we could be referring to a single atom. We could re refer to an argon atom or a hydrogen atom. We could mean an element in the molecular state. It could mean molecules of an element. There are some elements like hydrogen that are naturally found as molecules. We could mean that there are atoms of elements present in some form. You have sodium in your body. You don't have the element, you don't have elemental sodium, which is a highly reactive metal, reacts explosively with water, so you can imagine that would not be a good thing to have in your blood. But you do have sodium in your blood in the form of sodium ions. So we say that the element sodium is present in your body, but we mean it in some form. And so you just have to be a little careful. Uh, the ele term element is used in, in a few different ways.